I'm Dr. Kumar Gubala. I'm a senior consultant gynecologic oncologist at Apollo Proton Cancer Center, Chennai. In the next few minutes, we'll be talking about cervical cancer, the way it's diagnosed and treated. The female reproductive system consists of uterus, tubes, ovaries, and vagina. The lower part of the uterus, which is also called the mouth of the uterus or the neck of the womb, is called the cervix. Any cancer developing from this part of the uterus is called cervical cancer. There are two commonest varieties of cervical cancer. One is the squamous cell cancer, the other one is the adenocarcinoma. These cancers depend on from which cells they are originating from and also whether they are related to the human papillomavirus infection. Cervical cancer is the second most common cancer among women after breast cancer. Around 125,000 new cases are detected every year in India. The most common symptoms of cervical cancer is bleeding after sexual intercourse. Or you can have bleeding in between periods or you can have an abnormal discharge. Cervical cancer is diagnosed, one, with clinical examination, two, after you do a clinical examination, you need to take a biopsy, and three, is by imaging to see how far it spread. The stages of cervical cancer depends on the size of the cancer and how far is it is spread. Stage one, is the cancer if it is confined to the cervix and either it is microscopically visible or visible to the naked eye. Stage 2, if it has gone from the cervix to adjacent structures next to it like the vagina or structures next to the cervix. And stage 3 is if it's gone beyond stage 2 and it is obstructing the tubes that bring the urine from the kidneys to the bladder or is that gone up to the lymph glands in the lower part of the tummy. And stage four, if it is spread to the adjacent organs like the bladder and the bowel, which is the rectum, which is very near to the back passage, or is it gone to the other parts of the body. Routine pelvic examinations are very necessary. Every woman needs to go see her gynecologist every year and then have a smear test done every three to five years. Treatments of cervical cancer depends on the type of cancer, the stage of the cancer, and comorbidities of the patient and age of the patient as well. All these group together will make up a treatment plan for a patient and usually we discuss these treatment plans in the multidisciplinary team which is also called the tumor board. Surgical treatment uh, ranges from taking a tiny chunk of a cervix to a simple hysterectomy which is taking the womb out with the cervix and or a radical hysterectomy where we take the uterus out with the top of the vagina with tissues around it and taking the lymph glands in the tummy. Population or the women at risk for cervical cancer are the women who has never been vaccinated, who doesn't go for a screening program and have their smears done routinely as advised, or somebody who's got multiple sexual partners who are more prone to having the human papillomavirus which can cause infection and then cause precancerous changes and later changes into cancerous changes on the cervix.
Yes, cervical cancer can be prevented. Vaccinating the girls under 15 years would prevent cervical cancer by 80%. At the same time, someone who is between 25 to 65 who gets onto a routine cervical cancer screening program and gets their routine smears done, you can prevent cervical cancer by 80%. Screening for cervical cancer is done by doing a smear test where they take the cells from the neck of the womb and examine it under the microscope and see whether they are normal or abnormal. In limited resource settings, you have what is called a visual inspection of the cervix where they look at the neck of the womb with some special solutions called acetic acid. And all women needs to go into a routine screening program where they screen every three years or if you have a test which is called testing for the high-risk HPV DNA which is the most causative human papilloma virus that detected in it along with this smear test you could do it every five years. Cervical cancer vaccine is a vaccine given to prevent developing cervical cancer. It is usually given to women who has never been sexually active or children under 15 years of age in two divided doses, six months apart. If cancer is detected at an early stage, which is usually the stage one, there are huge survivals with it. 90 to 95 percent of the women survive with cancer in five years time at these stages. But at later stages, survivals could be very different. If you're diagnosed with a cervical cancer that's around stage two or three, where it is spread to the local organs or up to the lymph glands in the tummy, then 70 to 80% of these women survive for five years. Yes, cervical cancer can affect fertility depending on what stage you are diagnosed with cervical cancer. If it is diagnosed with a very early stage and if your cancer is less than two centimeters, we would be able to offer fertility preserving options where we only take the cervix out with tissues around it and the top of the vagina. This is called trachelectomy. And if it has not spread to the other lymph glands in the tummy. But if you are diagnosed with locally advanced cervical cancer and needing chemo radiation, then unfortunately we will not be able to preserve your fertility. Yes, cervical cancer can affect someone's sexual life depending on what treatment modality you're having. If you were to have radiotherapy and radiation to the top of the vagina, there could be a compromise in your sexual life. Today we talked about cervical cancer. Please get vaccinated if you're not vaccinated or please get your children vaccinated if they're under 15. Please get onto a routine screening program and get your smear test done regularly. If you have any abnormal symptoms like bleeding after intercourse, or bleeding in between periods or abnormal vaginal discharge, please go seek doctor's advice. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay informed. If you have any of these symptoms, please go see your doctors.